All right there now, it's your boy the two plus wonder. Back with another video on the Bamboozled Again News Network. And bamboozlements be real crafty, real subtle, you know what I mean? So I'm ready to highlight one for you. To me, kicking the can down the road is bamboozling. Because if you kick the can down the road, the, the detrimental circumstances will be exponentially greater than just dealing with it right now. Like say if you're in debt, you can continue to go further in debt to, you know, alleviate the uncomfortability in the present moment. But eventually you'll have to deal with a greater amount of discomfort due to not dealing with it right here, right now. So this is in relation to the port strike, right? Now, I'll be honest. I didn't think they was going to get a deal done. Not because I didn't think they could come together and come with a deal. I thought because of the politics involved would create an environment uh, for a deal not to get done. However, I guess, you know, various talking heads or just, you know, various entities and people who have influence in the situation came together and came up with a temporary uh, cease of the work stoppage. So from what I understand, they, uh, they the workers wanted a 77% raise. They got 62, but they didn't address the automation part of it, which basically you'll be looking at what's going to take your job or let's say if you got kids and you want to kind of funnel them into it, this will put, you know, down the road people's livelihoods and ways of, you know, making a means uh, to a slow end, right? And they see this every day. So they came up with a temporary uh, resolution, but the resolution uh, is is in place until after the election. I believe they have to come back to the table January 15th, if I'm not mistaken. Now, my uh, concern was a work stoppage, loss of money, <clears throat> and then scarcity creates, uh, you know, value. Like, say, if you're in the streets and there's a drought on a particular drug. Whoever has that particular drug, the price goes up because it's not as available. So it becomes more valuable due to it being less of it. So let's say they stroke, um, well, they continue to strike, you know, your fruits and things of that nature, perishables, various items that have been sold off the shelves and can't be as quickly replenished due to the stock they currently have sitting at the port would then create uh, inflation, basically in which you now have to pay more for that said item due to whether it's real or perceived scarcity. Um, so we seem to duck that one. However, they just spin the block. They're going to get you on inflation either which way because the way the corporate plantation construct is set up, they've agreed to pay these people 62% more, uh, meaning that they're not going to turn as, they're still turning a profit, a hellacious one. It just won't be as big. So due to them having to offset uh, the 62% wage increase, that means the price of the goods is going up anyway. Bamboozled again. The consumer always has to eat that. The company's not going to eat it. They're not going to, okay, we'll keep prices low by making our operations more efficient or firing people, less workers or less workers, more hours. You know what I'm saying? Nothing along those lines. The, sh the price increase will be shifted to consumer as it always is. So we're still going to have to deal with inflation anyway. You see what I'm saying? And it'll be in inflation over, I think they have to go up on the wage increase over a period of six years. Coupled with the fact they're still printing up money, it's going to happen anyway. Now, granted, okay, when it talks about, you know, in the word talks about, you know, having a famine of bread or famine, uh, things of that nature when certain, uh, like the four horses are released or the seals rather, uh, forgive me on that. If I got a misconstrued, it's going to happen either which way. We might just not know the exact catalyst for why it's happening, but it's going to happen either way. And they want it to happen. Because just like we see, and I'll tie this into, you know, Asheville, North Carolina, and the utter slap in the face, we give millions to Israel. <clears throat> we continue to launder money to Ukraine. For what reason? I have no clue. 
and Ukraine's not even a NATO member. We're just giving them money. You know, wherever you live at, I'm pretty sure you see the, the migrant issue, good choice of word, in which they're giving them food stamps, housing, they can get away with crimes. You see what I'm saying? They've given more to the migrants individually than they are to those affected in Asheville from a natural disaster. Uh, I think they're giving them $750. What's that going to do if your house floating down the river? You know what I'm saying? Like the utter slap in the face. And then come to find out that they diverted funds for the disaster relief from FEMA. They diverted that to funding you know, social services or whatever the case may be, or the social safety net for illegal people who ain't even supposed to be here. What sense does any of this make? And I guess they did it, um, you know, as we get closer to the election, let's, let's put something together. At first I thought they were just going to let it fall apart so they could win by default and suspend the election. And I don't know, I guess Biden doesn't want that to be his last hurrah with that sitting over top as he <sighs> So we'll just, okay, we'll get a temporary one done. Nothing set in stone. You know what I mean? That's like how they fund the government six months at a time and just keep kicking the can down the road. But you have to understand, these companies for the greater global agenda, which they're meeting with, I think in Switzerland, they want you to be a slave. They want you to be, and I guess they did it, you know, while they, you know, slow cook their other uh, agendas in real time, you know, stall them out, Debo, stall them out. But they they want everything automated. Because if you have no <clears throat> self-sufficiency skills and no job, you have to take some basic income. But in order to get this basic income, uh, here are some stipulations. You see what I'm saying? We're duped yet again. And I did see an individual uh, basically saying people who... Uh, gave a critique of the port strike and how detrimental it could be and now that they suspended the strike how they were false prophets and whoop 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 um I mean in relation to his talking point we're not out of the woods yet we're in the thick of it and can't get out you see what I'm saying but it, it just kind of like with, with that particular brother uh Gangas Khan, as I like to call her. And I've said this in earlier videos dating back three, two, three months ago. No matter what you, it's almost like dealing with a woman. And again, I use that analogy. No matter what you do, right or wrong, it doesn't matter. They'll just keep moving the goalposts or, or changing their arguments they're using to discredit you. But the only reason they're attempting to discredit you is because you're so credible. You don't have to discredit that which is already discredited. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's just, again, you know, just covering things in total. It's just amazing to see how far people who have knowledge of certain things have fallen away from this knowledge. I still believe they know it, but whatever their incentive is for doing it has become vastly greater than the truth. Or, or at least uh, uh, telling, preaching the truth if that's the word I want to use. None of these people are discrediting other people because they believe the other people are leading you off a cliff. They're doing it um, in, in the tactic of disruption, in the tactic of sowing seeds of doubt and discord, agents of destruction, using mouth. That's all it is. Because if you go, like, take Genghis Khan, okay, if we ask Genghis Khan, what do we do then? Moving forward. He doesn't have an answer. All of his talking points are in relation to not believing someone else. It's almost like politics, like, okay, what's your policy? I'm better than him. <clears throat> he's this, he's that. I didn't, I didn't ask you about that. I asked, what are you going to do? What I'm going to do is tell you about him. <laughs> But I have no plan. Typically, Negroes don't have a plan. Their plan is, just like the, the fake preacher man, to heat people into themselves for the energy harvest or financial you know, incentive or whatever the case may be, ego boost, so on and so forth. But they have no plan for you. They have no care for you. People actually care for you, tell you the truth, even if it hurts your feelings. Because it's the truth is what sets you free. 
And it's also what gets you on a lot. You see what I'm saying? These people don't care nothing about you. Like, it, it, I, it just, again, continues to amaze me mentally how Genghis Khan can say, oh, this particular individual isn't masculine, all the while doing unmasculine things. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm a man, I whoop the whoop the whoop. But then when you see the man who, according to you, has done these uh, egregious acts upon you and your family, you ain't got nothing to say. And then, like Debo, after he leave, I'll be back talking. Then you come with this sermon using his talking point that you say none of his talking points are valid, saying uh, you keep silent to a demon. <clears throat> so the man disrespected your children according to you and so on and so forth. You see him and now you use his talking point and want to keep silent. To me, that's a guilt response. If, if, if me, right, and I'm hopping on here saying this man did all this, that, and the third to me. And then we hop on a live or some panel discussion together, and I say nothing. That then kind of discredits all the stuff I'm saying. Because if the man did all that, you should be the first one wanting to address the it. Yo, woo, woo, yeah, yeah, what you know what I'm saying? And this said man then offered you up. So you're saying he's disrespecting your family, but you won't uh defend the honor of said family when that same man offers you up to fisticuffs? It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. Then in one sentence, you'll say, well, this isn't talking about Genghis Khan of, of the Chosen One's niche. Uh, this is, I'm not a scriptural channel. And then use scripture to rebuke the next man all while you're going about it unscripturally. You know what I mean? Like these people hold you, like even dealing with a woman, she'll hold you to a standard that she doesn't fit and doesn't hold herself to. So you should respond like this. You should do this for me, this, that, and the third for me. Meanwhile, they're antagonizing you all day long and feel just or will claim some type of justification for doing so. When if the shoe was on the other foot, you wouldn't feel the same way. <clears throat> I think Finesse came up with one of the greatest sayings of 2024. It's cool when they do it, but it's a problem when I do it. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. But again, like I said, you can't really, it's hard to do just because you're a man or, you know, just, just how we're kind of hardwired set up. You ain't going to let, yeah, talking, yeah, okay, I'll pay you no mind. But you can only say but so much for so long before I address it. You know what I mean? And then you had no choice but to address it. And then when you try to address it in the way men would, they start doing some old other stuff. They just keep making videos. So they have no desire for a resolution. You see them just like with your woman. You know what I'm saying? You can try to, you know, try to resolve it, whatever it may be. But if she don't want it resolved, she's going to make uh, situations that had nothing to do with whatever the issue is and bring that into the situation and make it seem like this is all a part of some bigger plan and scheme. So much so that you're so far removed from the original offense or whatever the situation was, we don't forgot why we still here, why is we arguing? That's why I typically... Once I see nobody's trying to comprehend or come to some type of resolution, I'm done with it. I keep arguing about the same stupid stuff all the and you don't want to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I kind of got a little personal situation like that where, you know, they don't want the uh, issue resolved. But they don't want the issue resolved because they can't really blame me for it. So now I'm just kind of getting the, you know, silent treatment or whatever the case may be. Because in times past, it'd be like, oh, you're doing this. Even if it had nothing to do, oh, you drink or <clears throat> whatever. So you can't really hit me with my past because my past is no longer in my present. and hasn't been for a significant amount of time. So so you can't do none of that. So you can't blame me for nothing. I've been handling my business. So you just stop talking. But the stop talking is actually stopping us from coming to a resolution and moving forward. I, I hate being stuck. I think, you know what I'm saying? Especially when someone else has some say so in it that's why as best i can help it i try not to have anybody but you're sure in authority over me i don't like being on nobody else's time that's why i hardly me work these jobs unless i find the job actually fulfilling or purposeful <clears throat> i don't like being on nobody else's time i don't like dealing with nobody else's uh company policies that don't make no practical and tangible sense you know what i'm saying now granted it's your institution you do whatever you want to do that don't mean i gotta be a part of it which then puts the onus on me you know being hell-bent every day to become more 
self-sufficient every day. Even if that means, you know, liquidating assets or, you know, uh, trimming my bills to stuff that's not necessarily necessary or gaining various skill set that I can use for myself at a later date. Because we live in this kind of, and I always use the term, this plantation construct in which um, it's like, I, like based on my personality, which I've come to discover, I have, I don't care about like social hierarchy. I tend to treat everybody the same. CEO man, janitor. I don't I don't really be doing all that brown nose and then you know what I'm saying? I'm more of the individual who tends to gravitate to the individual they themselves outside of any kind of uh, societal esteem or you just who you is. And I have a gambit of friends who cover the the spectrum as far as personalities or race, age, ideologies. But the common factor among them all is that I perceive them to be genuinely who they portray themselves to be. I like genuineness. I like authenticity. And that's why I really don't be fooling with a lot of stuff. I was just thinking about this last night. Like, it's hard for me to deal with a lot of stuff in society because I ain't feeling it. It ain't real to me no more. You know what I'm saying? That's why I can't deal with people because they're not real. And I ain't talking about perfect. You can have whatever, you know, character defect you, you want. I'm not tripping and I'm not overly fault-finding or overly judgmental on that aspect. It's just the authenticity, you know what I'm saying? Like, even in the whole recovery world, right, I don't fool with people who have, let's say, five years clean because they perpetrating a fraud. But it might be a guy who's been trying it for, let's say, five years, you know, relapse off and on, uh, and now he's got six months. I'll fool with him harder because he's just more real about his journey. You see what I'm saying? He just more off that, yeah, I failed because I, I wasn't ready or this tripped me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no rhyme or reason to it other than just the authenticity and genuineness, genuineness or the perception thereof of the individual that I'm dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when I used to be in the world to some degree, people used to trip out who I would have conversations with. The rock star, the, like, the sheriff, man, he's at the bar. We had him re just strip all that away. We just had man-to-man conversation and connecting over some 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 suds you know what i'm saying and my friends who i came with trip like yo like i'll forget i'm there with them because i'm just engaged like i'm learning stuff from we kicking it back and forth you know what i'm saying old p it don't make no difference it don't make no difference but again in this society everyone's playing like chameleon you know what i'm saying even in your politics even on youtube like these you know so say red pill dating coaches things of that nature I don't perceive them to be genuine because they're giving you a bunch of information that they don't apply in real life themselves. You know what I'm saying? Just like I can have a whole bunch of information about, I'll just use plumbing, right? I can read a thousand books about plumbing. Put me on a plumbing job where I have to apply what I know or what I've learned, I can't because I haven't done it. And that be the kicker. People are live or telling you or preaching things that they don't live. They're just bamboozling you with words. You know what I'm saying? That's why I started the Bamboos Again News Network, where I can report from the front line, where I can say, yo, on this I was wrong, and here's why I was wrong. Because I don't have no ego image to maintain. Here's what I've done, and I know it to be right, so I'm going to share it with y'all. If it worked for me, it should work for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have no desire to heap people in, or, or to have power and authority over people. I don't care nothing about that. I'm the more of the liberating type. I, I, want, I want all my minds and them free me word up. Even if I don't like you, you still deserve to be free. You know what I'm saying? But on that note, I'm almost to the gym. I just want to come through with a real quick one on y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like we, hey, let's remember, we not out the woods yet. It's almost the calm before the storm. And on that note, I'm going to sign off. Woo!